Its presence has enabled an uneasy relationship to develop between two of the plateau's most opportunistic predators, the fox and the bear. brown bear, a close relative of the grizzly, tries to dig the pikers out of their burrows. Even hard frozen soil presents little obstacle to a determined bear. Meanwhile, the wily Tibetan fox trails the bear, hoping to profit from the confusion. True to form, the crafty fox claims the prize. A combination of inaccessibility and ancient traditions which forbid hunting means that in some parts of the plateau, wild animals have remained relatively undisturbed, even today. But in those areas which are within reach of motor vehicles, these historical safeguards have been undermined. This change is illustrated in the fortunes of the Chiru. A century ago, millions migrated across the plateau. Unfortunately for the Chiru, its fur, known as Shatouche, or King of Wolves, is highly prized. In recent decades, poachers have been able to venture deep into the wilderness, killing thousands of Chiru. However, the situation is improving. Anti-poaching laws are now actively enforced. So every summer, female Chiru can head to the birthing grounds in relative safety. Out on the plateau, newborn Chiru are vulnerable to predators. So the mothers must try to hide and protect them. The most recent problem faced by the Chiru is the new Tibet Qinghai Railway which cuts right through their traditional migration routes. Running nearly 2,000 kilometers through some of the highest terrain on Earth, the railway is an astonishing technical feat. It's too early to see its effect on the wildlife, but the engineers have made efforts to incorporate underpasses where wildlife can cross the line in safety. As the modern world increasingly impacts on Tibet, its traditions could be in danger of being eroded. But thanks to the sheer scale of this remote region, there are still many wild places that have so far remained largely intact. The least